Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this is the Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 42. And uh, I know this book is a little out of date. It's not the most current Amazing Spider-Man. I think 797 is. Um, so I think there's been two issues since this. But uh, it is the most current Amazing Spider-Man that I have. And uh, I got it because I had quite a few listeners over on Anchor who liked Spider-Man. So Celestria, thank you for uh, requesting The Amazing Spider-Man and to everyone else who requested him as well. So this is going to be a pretty short video because I don't have a lot to say about this book actually. Um, and that's a good thing. I liked it and I don't, don't have a lot to say about it other than uh, you should get it if you want a good Spider-Man story. So to start off with, uh, we start here with uh, this trio of bad guys who are called the Enforcers. And they're actually um, some of Spider-Man's oldest uh, villains. Uh, going all the way back to issue 10, I think, of The Amazing Spider-Man. And I actually have a uh, reprint of that book. And so it was kind of cool to see him again. I don't know if a lot of people today would recognize uh, the Enforcers. But I was like, hey, I recognize them. So it was kind of a cool throwback because um, I've had that comic book for years and it was one of the first Spider-Man uh, stories I remember reading. So it was cool to see those uh, that trio of bad guys again. So I don't really know what's going on in this amazing Spider-Man world. I haven't been following it really. Um, like, like you guys know, I'm more of a DC person and so I, I don't really follow Marvel that much. I have been following it more recently since, you know, I've been getting back into comics and, uh, you know, with the Marvel movies movies and everything, I've wanted to know more about it. So uh, I think, think I will try getting into maybe Captain America since that'll be getting a new number one soon. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I've, I know Tana Hesey Coates, who will be writing it, has had a track record of being racist towards white people and focusing on white guilt and everything like that but hopefully he, he'll do a good job so we'll see um i'll probably watch a review on it before i get it but um i don't know we'll see like i said <laughs> so anyway um as far as i can tell betty brant's fiance is missing they think he's dead so they go to a um psychic to uh, try and contact him, um, Peter is like, "Okay, this is ridiculous. You need, you know, this isn't real." But he's like, "Just, you know, be quiet, Peter. I want to contact Ned. I think is his name, Ned Leeds." So, anyway, Spider Man's kind of like, "Yeah, whatever," and uh, the psychic and ends up kicking him out because they don't believe. So Betty's a little mad and is like, you know, I, I know it might seem foolish, but I, I'm willing to try anything to talk to Ned. And um, then they see this this figure back here in the background and they're like, you know, who, who's that? They're following us. So Peter runs off after them. This was a really cool scene. So uh, and this is kind of a classic Spidey thing to do is they, you know, you draw them in different positions, but... Um, these are lighter back here because, you know, that shows he's jumping around and everything like that. So that was just a cool scene right there. Um, he loses the person. And so he's like, well, darn. So then we cut to this scene. And um, <laughs> this this was written by Dan Slott. And uh, Dan Slott uh, has... A track record of being very SJW, very uh, just not a good writer. And he's been on The Amazing Spider-Man for like 10 years. Um, he'll be switching over to Iron Man in issue 802, I think. <clears throat> but for now, anyway, um, he's still on Spider-Man for a few more issues. His last run will be, or his last storyline is the go down swinging. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which... Uh, I will probably get since it's close to the landmark 800th issue. So anyway, they're having a they're having a chat. 
um, about Ned and everything like that. And they're trying to figure out, you know, where did he go? What happened? Yada, yada. Um, then we cut to this scene at the Daily Beagle. And they realize there's kind of some weird things about this statue. Um, it, there was a lot of money um, that was said to have gone to pay for this. But it was like um, a couple million dollars, I think, which is more than, than that statue should have cost. Anyway, um, so yeah, Betty Brant, Peter Parker kind of working together to solve this mystery. And <laughs> I just thought this was kind of funny. So this is, um, uh, what's his name? I always forget his name. Bobby, I think. Something like that. Um, anyway, he's taken J. Jonah Jameson's place as the editor-in-chief of the Daily Bugle. Um, Robbie. Robbie. Robbie's his name. Not Bobby. Robbie. My bad. Anyway, um, and he says, A cold case about a long-forgotten battle? How is that relevant today? I don't know. That just sounds like very, very comic booky talk. So, just a little cliche there. I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, moving on, um, Peter and Betty decide to split up, but he plants a tracker on Betty to try to uh, make sure she stays safe because he doesn't know what's up. Um, so yeah, we go to this scene. They're they're doing their investigative stuff. And they obviously are on the right track because, boom, the enforcers break in and uh, take Betty captive. So, that's that's what, what happens. Uh, Spidey comes in, he tries to stop them, but he runs out of web fluid, uh, which is very convenient. And, so yeah, they, they end up es escaping. And uh, the enforcers end up... Sorry for that glare. The enforcers end up getting away. But at least Betty's safe for now. Um, so yeah, more investigating. More more talking. It wasn't like a real action-y book. It was more of a comic... Or I'm sorry, more of a story comic. Um, I mean, there's still action stuff. Like here we have Spider-Man doing his Spidey stuff and everything like that. We have the Kingpin... Um, but a lot of it is just story. So she meets this guy. He brings her down into the tunnels. Because um, there's like this old system used for um, smuggling and used by the gangs and everything like that. And this guy, some professor, knows about him. Um, but they end up running to the enforcers again. And this time Betty does get taken captive. Along with this guy here. <clears throat> so yeah. More. Uh, you know. It's tense. They're getting ready to. Kill off these guys. Um, and the whole plan here. And this is. Spoiler alert. I mean this book's kind of old. But spoiler. Uh, the plot point here is that statue is actually a bomb. <clears throat> That's why it costs so much. And uh, it has enough C4 in it to blow up. I don't know half of New York or, or something like that you know it's always some kind of crazy crazy number but anyway they take off leave these people here to be killed when the explosion goes off but thank goodness Spidey comes in saves the day get some cool action scenes um, so yeah the, the last part of the book is really cool um, not like I said, I don't have much to say about this book. It just, it was a fun read. You know, there's some good action, but mainly it's just some, a lot of story stuff. Um, so yeah, they end up stopping the explosion. And, uh, this homeless dude stops this, the servant. So this is one of the, he's like a henchman. And he's going to go manually blow up the bomb and the statue, but this homeless guy stops them. Well... Turn a couple pages here, and we find out that the homeless guy is Ned. So that's spoiler there. Um, they remove the statue and instead, you know, dedicated to Ned Leeds. Which I don't. Okay, so his name is is Leeds, but 
here it's L E D E S for Leeds. So I don't know. I mean, I get the play on words, but it just seems. I don't know. Why wouldn't it be L E E D S? I don't know. Maybe you guys know. Maybe I'm missing something here. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> the enforcers get stopped. They're put behind bars. Spider Man saves the day. And that's. That's pretty much the end. So this this is the next one. This is Dan Slott's last story. Go down swinging. And it looks like it'll have Green Goblin and maybe Red Goblin? Yeah, it'll have Red Goblin in it too. So anyway, um, I'm looking forward to this. I hope it's a good story. And um, I might be getting to the comic book store today. I'm going to try. But yeah, that was the main story of annual number 42 there was a small story here in the back about spider-man's uh spider sense it was it was all right it was kind of funny um they made it sound like Sp peter's spider sense kind of feels like a light headache when it when there's like minor trouble like it's just kind of a buzz and then when there's major trouble it's like a pounding jackhammer headache which i don't think that's what spider sense would would feel like because Peter would literally go around with a headache all day long. And I mean, that's kind of the joke here is he has a headache all day long and I don't know. It just was like, okay, no, he can't. That doesn't make sense. If his spider sense is a headache, he, would, he wouldn't be able to do anything all day because he has a, such a bad headache. So I just thought that was kind of goofy, but it was still fun. Fun little story here. Um, I'm not even going to go into it, but um, I did... This part back here was funny. Uh, it was like a little joke thing. The mini costumes of Spider-Man. So here we have classic Spidey, symbiote Spidey. So yeah, go, go through a bunch of these and there's a few jokes here like uh, iron Spidey, iron deficiency Spidey. Yeah, you know, not the best joke, but, but still pretty funny. You know, here we have iron spider and then he's low on iron there. Um, it's like the last one is, uh, never mind, it's Daredevil. So that's that's gonna do it for this one. I want to know what you guys thought about Black Panther, by the way. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Um, you know, it felt kind of redundant in a way, but I still, you know, still like the story. It was it was good, good story. Anyway, um, <clears throat> the next one will probably be the Spectacular Spider-Man number two ninety eight, I think two ninety eight. Uh, I have 299 and 300, but 298 is the one I bought specifically to review, so I'm going to re review that one. Uh, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do reviews in the future. I like doing reviews a lot, but they do, um, you know, I have to find time to do it, and yeah, I'm pretty busy. So I might just start doing what the comic kid does. Uh, he just will show, show us his comic haul for the week or for the month. And he'll just briefly, you know, say, hey, I like this one because of this, or I didn't like this because of that. And then he moves on. So I might might start doing that instead of, you know, full-length full, full -length reviews. We'll see. But there will at least be one more full one on Spectacular Spider-Man uh, 298. Or, through, yeah, 298, I think. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you liked this, let me know. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Later.